speaker is um, Brian Johansson. And uh, Brian is the uh, Senior Project Officer for Building Management and Works, Department of Finance. As, that, uh, as you can see on the slide there, my name's Brian Johansson. I'm from the Department of Finance. Uh, and we're just down here in Brookman Street. I guess the, the first thing you're wondering is what we do. Uh, and we assist client government agencies to meet their procurement objectives whilst complying with the relevant acts and policies. How do we do it? Uh, well, we do that through maintenance of government buildings, uh, strategically managing the state's building assets, partnering with stakeholders, uh, and maintaining and promoting a focus on good asset management uh, in activities encompassing general restoration maintenance, so perhaps uh, maintenance of a heritage or restoration of a heritage building, uh, carpet replacement in classrooms perhaps. Uh, we do it through routine maintenance, uh, so maybe air conditioner, RCD or fire equipment servicing. Uh, and we also do it through breakdown repairs, so roof leaks, broken windows, etc. We, we manage plan improvement work uh, for state government building assets, which of course involves liaising with our local contractors uh, to enable the effective delivery of a range of minor works from office fit-outs to construction of amenity blocks in national parks uh, and air conditioner and heating upgrades in schools. We help achieve local solutions for our clients uh, by providing local input, knowledge and delivery uh, for major works projects regionally and those can range from say 500,000 right through to say 15 million. Uh, some recent and current projects uh, you may know about include the new crematorium at the Kalgoorlie Cemetery, the new Esperance Primary School, uh, there's a new dam that's just been completed at Northern Racecourse and the construction of a new trade training centre at Cunderdon. Uh, we also assist agencies in their purchase of goods and services over, say, 20,000. Uh, we're adding value by providing a framework for responsible and effective procurement for products and services, partnering with the agency in the planning and development of their requirement, facilitating the quotation or tender process, and providing an equitable and accountable method of assessment uh, to deliver a value for money result for our local agencies. Uh, which is tailored to the Goldfields Esperance region and supporting a number of suppliers with a regional presence. We also manage a much utilised air charter contract uh, which allows agencies the confidence of contracted safety standards and costings in the delivery of their objectives in rural and remote areas of our vast state. And we also empower and enable our our local agencies uh, through sharing of knowledge, uh, giving them advice on effective contract management, risk management, and partnering with them in the development of the planning of their requirements and sharing our expertise and experience. Who do we do it for? Our clients consist of state, all state government agencies with a regional presence or regional influence. Uh, with the exception of government trading enterprises such as the Esperance Port Authority, Western Power, the Water Corp and the Public Transport Authority who have been given special dispensation to contract in a different manner. A number of agencies also have special responsibilities uh, under their relevant acts uh, such as the Department of Main Roads uh, for roadworks, the Department of Transport in their construction of marinas and uh, Land Corp for industrial sites and land development. But for the majority of state public authorities, uh, we provide a combination of the services I've just outlined. <clears throat> now, agencies are obligated to purchase under the relevant State Supply Commission or Public Works Act, in line with the applicable thresholds and guided by the appropriate policy. And we have a number of processes in place to facilitate agency purchasing, and I've outlined a few on the slide just up there. Um, some of you may be aware that in 1998, the Department of Contract, Contracting and Management Services, which was a previous incarnation, uh, introduced the Service Alliance Agreement as an initiative to improve service delivery in regional Western Australia. The purpose of the arrangement uh, was to establish strong working relationships with local contractors on the delivery of building related maintenance and improvement work up to 50,000. Now although the arrangement is still operational, 
uh, Department of Finance has decided to refresh the arrangement, which will be known as the Service Alliance 2012. And while I'm not going to go into a huge amount of detail here, it's worth being aware that there will be an informative of upcoming supplier forum, uh, and that's going to be on the 10th here in Kalgoorlie. Uh, I believe it's actually here. Um, and that will cover the Refresh Service Alliance and the Department of Finance envisages that the, uh, the relationship will continue uh, and the relationship of mutual commitment uh, that enables the state to meet the challenges of the mining boom in our regional areas uh, will continue as well. Now in the procurement of goods and services, uh, I've already touched on the aggregated purchasing of, of whole government contracts through common use arrangements or group buying arrangements. Now these generally long term uh, pick and buy agreements between state and pre-qualified contractors offer mutually competitive efficiencies in high volume uh, purchases statewide and region wide. <coughs> but for acquisitions not covered uh, by what I've just spoken about there, um, the State Supply Commission's open and effective competition policy applies and that allows for uh, streamlined purchases for under 5,000 for agencies. Uh, a sufficient number of verbal quotations for uh, purchases between the 5 and 20 range. A sufficient number of formal written quotes must be sought between the range of 20,000 and 150,000 where uh, local suppliers generally will be approached uh, to offer value for money solutions for agency requirements. And for all acquisitions over the 150,000 threshold, an open tender process applies, which possibly some of you may be already aware. Now the Department of Finance assists a wide variety of agencies to engage with private industry to meet their varied operational requirements. From air conditioner maintenance in the Nanajara lands, to food and grocery supply in hospitals, to constructing shade sales and transportables in schools, the requirements of the state are quite diverse. However, at the core of uh, all agency spending is the consideration of cost and non-cost uh, factors that together form a value for money decision. Now considerations, these considerations are such that might minimise, uh, minimise or mitigate the WA stakeholders' uh, exposure to undue risk. Uh, considerations of how agencies purchasing will contribute to the development or fostering uh, of sustainable ongoing relationships with, with local industry and of course considerations about uh, regarding social responsibility. So, <clears throat> so what are the benefits of purchasing in the regions? Well I've touched on it briefly in some of the previous slides but uh, one of the benefits of regional purchasing is that a, a closer working relationship with customer and contractor establishes mutual trust that benefits both parties uh, and leads to increased contractor performance and contract performance uh, through better contract management. Both customer and contractor are also well placed. Uh, yep, are also well placed uh, to decide on what a, an actual value for money decision is because they're better placed uh, to understand issues such as freight, weather, uh, travel considerations, <coughs> uh, relationships and sustainability. Uh, all of which contribute to better risk management cost savings uh, over the life of the asset or service. Harnessing those relationships uh, leads to more projects being delivered within appropriate time frames. Uh, and there are obvious benefits which I probably don't have to go into uh, for capable regional businesses to be in a position to bid competitively on government work because it provides, uh, <clears throat> it improves their capacity further and as such builds the entire region's capacity further with flow on effects on the skills and labour. And of course it, uh, it allows for the application of the state government's buy local policy to be at the forefront of planning and development phases for any procurement. Using our local knowledge to provide the means that allow local regional businesses to bid competitively with metropolitan based companies. Uh, not just through the application of a number of pricing preferences uh, applied to regional businesses based in or supporting other local suppliers, uh, but also in the initial scoping. Now a couple of quick pointers 
uh, on how to position yourselves to engage competitively with government. The, the bi-local policy uh, provides for the application of pricing preferences based, uh, for businesses based within the prescribed distance uh, of the contract delivery point, which for the Goldfields Essence region is 400 kilometres from the uh, from the contract delivery point. So if you're if you're a, a supplier based in say Leonora and the contract's going to be in Kalgoorlie, then you'll be applied these preferences. Uh, now for goods and services over uh, 750,000 in value, there is an obligatory local content section in the qualitative section uh, with a total weighting of at least 20% towards qualitative assessment. That requires a respondent to provide details of how award of contract will benefit WA socially, economically and environmentally. I suggest with both of these sections that you read them carefully in a tender document. Um, certainly fill them in. Uh, it's definitely worth your while. Um, and just be aware that these sorts of criteria may also be embedded in some of the other qualitative criteria in a tender document. Um, if you're going to get a website, and uh, it was on my actual one, and you'll see that that's not actually our address, so that's where the difference is. Um, if you're going to write a website down, www.tenders.wa.gov.au, uh, it's an invaluable resource. Uh, it's where all open tenders above the 150 threshold will be valued. Uh, uh, sorry, advertised, as well as uh, a number below where uh, we may be seeking a more competitive environment. I encourage you to register on the website, uh, which will enable you to set some search parameters for tenders or request for quotes that you may be interested in, uh, and therefore being notified by t uh, when tenders fitting within those parameters are being planned or are also being released. Um, so you can, in, ma in many cases, also bid electronically uh, which will obviously lessen your burden on uh, posts and facts. Um, there's a number of resources on the Department of Finance website, uh, including brochures, including supplier's guide to tendering. Uh, and probably the other thing is, if you're going to take something away, I would suggest that you come and see us. Uh, we are just down the road here at Brookman Street uh, in the Brookman Mews section, so in amongst Professionals, Jenny Craig, Liquor Land. <laughs> I say that last. Um, but I do encourage you to make the call. Um, I've got my cards here. I encourage you to come and see us, have a chat with us. We're not scary. Um, but we can also offer some probably more in depth pointers on, on how maybe you can position yourselves to um, bid competitively on government work. So thank you for your time.